Hello, I'm Dr. Catherine Horton. I'm making a short set of videos about the crimes that are being committed against me and other um, victims by the intelligence agencies. And um, what I thought I'll do for that is I'll split the, um, the, my testimony into several separate um, videos. So you can select which of, the, um, which of the videos you would like to watch, what information you'd like to access. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make um, my statement under oath. And the idea is that if you are a victim and would like to use um, an expert testimony or the testimony of another victim in court, you should be able to use these videos. So I'm using the English oath um, as it conforms with the Oath Act 1978. And this should be recognized. It's recognized by the English court. So the idea is that other courts should also recognize it. And um, so under so my, my sworn testimony, I can be bound by, and it's, um, it's to the best of my knowledge. What I'm going to use is the witness affirmation. There are two versions of the oath. One of them is the religious oath in the UK courts, but you can also use the neutral witness affirmation if you're an atheist or you just want to um, have the, the, neutral, um, the neutral oath. The two are exactly identical. It, one is not better or stronger than the other you're equally bound to say the truth um, you know, in a court of law under both. So I'm using the witness affirmation, you can, you can Google that, um, as prescribed by the Oath Act 1978, which is still um, binding in the um, UK courts. So, I do solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give shall, we, shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So as I said, I'm Dr. Catherine Horton. I was um, born in Transylvania, which is part of Romania. My parents are ethnic Hungarians and Germans. Um, in the mid-1980s, we fled communist Romania to Germany. I completed my entire school career in Germany, and um, I skipped year nine on merit, came top of my year, which allowed me to go to Oxford to study physics. So between the years 2000 and 2004, I was at Hartford College in Oxford, I finished with a first class Masters of Physics. After that I um, did a, a PhD. In Oxford the name for it is DPhil, but it's exactly the same. And my PhD was in um, experimental high energy physics. After that I became a fellow, a research fellow at St. John's College, Oxford. And I was there between the years 2008 and 2012. And part of my research um, was, for example, at, um, the, um, at CERN. But I also worked at the German um, Accelerator Laboratory, DAISY, in Hamburg, which is the German electron synchrotron. So um, I'm a high energy physicist. Um, but I, before I proceed, I would like you to um, give you proof that I really was um, a fellow at St. John's College, Oxford. I'm not just saying it. Remember, it's also under oath. But now you also have a written confirmation of this. And um, when you become a fellow at Oxford, what most people don't know is that you don't actually get a work contract. It's still the old boys network, you know, probably just a tip on the shoulder at some point and you just turned up. And it's very much kept like that. Of course, the entrance requirements these days, if you become a research fellow, have completely changed. So hundreds of people applied and eventually I was selected by a panel. Um, but you still don't have a work contract. So the only thing you get is if you request it and only if you request it. Um, a, red, a letter, um, a confirmation letter by the college office that you indeed were or are a fellow um, at that college. So what I will show you now is the this precise confirmation that I requested before I left Oxford, just so that I can prove, you know, later on that I really was there. It was um, completed, or it was actually given to me on 9th of August 2012 by Joy Axtell, um, who was the... Um, um, the, the college office, um, head of the, the college office, she was the college office administrator, that's the, her official title. And what I did, so this is a, a copy of the original letter, and I, I'm showing you a copy because I blacked out my date of birth, and that's because it's still used by banks and other places as a password and things like that. So I don't really want to make that public, but I'll show you this letter. So it, this is what it looks like, that's um, St. John's College Oxford here, that's their contact details should you want to um, confirm this with them. And this is the date, 9th of August 2012. So you can see that was uh, um, about two months before I left at the end of term 
in 2012, so Oxford has three academic terms, and it says, this is to certify that Dr. Catherine Horton, date of birth, scrubbed out by me, yeah, um, hang on, maybe you can see it better like that, with the paper behind, is employed as a full-time junior research fellow in physics at St. John's College, Oxford University, uh, sorry, St. John's College, University of Oxford for the period, oh, can you read that? 1st of October 2008 to 30th September 2012. Stamp St. John's College, signed Joy Axdell. Okay, so you can call St. John's College and confirm that indeed I was a fellow there. And um, there's this, um, you know how we've got this um, rivalry um, between um, Oxford and Cambridge. And essentially if you're at Cambridge, then um, they don't have junior research fellows, they just have research fellows. And if you're at Oxford, they make a distinction between did the college pay you or did an external um, grant um, body, body fund you. And if it's the college, if it's actually a college fellowship, you're a junior research fellow. And if the funding came externally, you're a senior research fellow. And, you know, traditionally there used to be just differences in seniority, but these days really not always. But anyway, so if you're from Cambridge, you will recognize this as the research fellowship. And the people from Oxford always have a chip on their shoulder and some people wanted a change so that we also, you know, so my full title was junior research fellow um, at St. John's College. So um, there we are. After that, uh, so uh, during during that time, I um, I worked at um, in high energy physics. After that, I bit, did a brief project in medical physics, and then I um, changed to study the physics of human systems, and that's what I did for a very long time, um, on and off. So um, when I was at St John's College, I did that for um, the entire last year of my fellowship, and. After the end of my fellowship in 2012, I moved to Germany, where I um, joined my husband, who was a, um, a researcher there, and um, I tried to start um, to bootstrap a startup. And um, this was intended to help people get back into work, especially if um, if it was um, you know foreigners coming into the country and not having any connections or maybe having a different level of education or their education certificates not being recognized. And I wanted to build a platform where these people could be integrated really quickly into the um, into the employment market and maybe even create new jobs um, through that. Unfortunately, at that time, I was already being harassed and this entire endeavor was sabotaged, systematically sabotaged. I mean, to the point where, um, you know, I, I couldn't really continue um, pursuing that, especially when you're, when it's a startup and you're in a, in a country where you haven't, well, I, I grew up in Germany, but I didn't have any business contacts there. If you are under the sort of harassment I was under, this sort of task becomes essentially impossible. So I tried for about two years um, to actually do that. And um, in the end, I just realized I, I have to give up. So I think I, um, when did I start? Well, I um, started, well, as soon as I left at the, um, in autumn 2012, I spent a, a couple of months actually drawing up what I really want to do in detail. Um, and then we moved to Munich and that's where I really launched this thing or, you know, launched the, the effort. So we were there, well, starting in spring 2013, and um, I was working on this um, pretty much un until the entirety of 2013 and 2014. Um, and then at the end of 2014, I realized I just have to give up this, this endeavor. It's just impossible. And what I did then after that is that I worked in um, wealth management briefly. I was very interested, so I, um, I got into the physics of human systems first, um, and then you know I started this um, this startup endeavor, trying to use my insights from from systems analysis, and you know trying to map out how the labor market is going to develop. And then when I couldn't do that, I went back to systems analysis, and I got interested in currencies, and what is happening with currencies. And then um, I went to a um, wealth management firm that was actually specializing in gold and um, trying to give people, um, so companies and so on, extra stability, sexual wealth management by investing in gold. So, you know, actual really core base, um, you know, emergency backup 
for, for pension funds and for, for companies. So I was there very, very briefly um, because after that I realized that what I really wanted to do is actually um, work with complex systems and um, think about how to improve them. So with complex systems I mean anything, companies, big institutions, they are run these days according to principles that are still, but they are very intuitive, but they are not always very efficient. So what I did then um, after that is that I went back into studying um, systems analysis specifically for complex human systems. It was basically my private research project. And then um, we moved to Switzerland and when we're here I was, um, I, I launched a consultancy um, for essentially um, systems analysis or the, the analysis of complex human systems. And again, I was sabotaged, um, and then I started being assaulted in January 2016. And since January 2016, it has essentially become impossible to do my work because I'm being assaulted hourly. So um, this is why I went to the court of desperately trying to have this stopped. It's ongoing. In fact, the attacks on me are getting ever more insane. But um, I will um, leave that to a separate video so you can, you can get the details of the abuse um, separately.